I'm Vince. And I'm Al. And thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of this Leo Bros Journey. Vince, how are you, my bro? I'm doing great, man. It's It's been a while. I know it's been since last week, but I had my Saturday show, uh, which did not go so well. And I don't think I addressed this last episode. So I wanted to announce to everybody, my Wi-Fi in my house is absolutely bonkers. So that'll be fixed. I was in a poor room for my Wi-Fi. That's going to be fixed this Saturday. I have big topics, so uh, stay tuned for that. And then I just talked to you yesterday, and uh, it was great, but it was a short episode. Uh, just one topic. So hopefully today we have, we have two topics. So we're going to change it up a little bit. How about you, man? What's new? <laughs> just going to say, it's hilarious the two topics. <laughs> they don't go with one another, but it, it's hilarious. It's, it's some combination. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a dynamic duo right there. Uh as far as for me, before I say how I've been, dude, I want to say, you know, congrats with your show. You kind of took your show to a next level. I know it was kind of the Wi-Fi mess up, mix up. So I understand your frustration, but don't beat yourself up. You, it, It's going to be a fun time. I know you're having fun, and I'm looking forward to this upcoming one because you said some big things are going to be happening in Star Wars, so I'm excited to hear that out. As far as for me, I'm doing good. I said it last episode. Vince and I are preparing for our SATs, which is a standardized testing here in the United States. The majority of our audience is from the U.S., so I'm sure you guys understand you're about to take it or you've taken it already or you don't have to worry about it yet. So that's coming up this Saturday. Vince and I have been working really hard on that. Haven't been able to put as much energy and effort to our own shows, which is... Frustrating, but we understand at the same time. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do, but we're excited uh, to get things going. So, so Vince, you want to hit us up with our first topic for today? First topic of the day is Winnie the Pooh. Winnie right the now, Pooh. As a, <laughs> I was thinking, what, Al? Um, the, fun fact, growing up, my uh, my bro, like Christopher Robin, want a little fun fact, but all right. Um, but, yeah, so as of the recording of this episode, number one on trending right now is the movie, I think it's just called Winnie the Pooh, strategically called Winnie the Pooh. Wait, I think it's called Christopher Robin. That would be correct. I don't know what I was thinking of. My goodness. (laughs) Slap to the face. I'm, I'm sleeping over here. Yes, yes. Christopher Robin. The reason why I bring this up not only because growing up I was a huge Winnie the Pooh fan, as I think all of us were, I'm really bringing this up because, Al, you might be unaware of this, there's another movie coming out later this year called Farewell, Christopher Robin. Really? That movie uh, is has no correlation with Christopher Robin, like this new movie. Doesn't line up whatsoever. Farewell, Christopher Robin, which is the first movie to come out, is about how Winnie the Pooh came to be the the writer of who wrote you know Winnie the Pooh along with Christopher Robin, Hundred Acre Woods, all those characters. It's about he was a war soldier, came home and he had really had really bad PTSD. So he went and he bought a house off in an abandoned woods, right, called the Hundred Acre Woods. He had a boy, uh, his son that he loved, named Christopher Robin, his wife. And he went out to the yard with Christopher Robin every single day to explore these woods. Christopher Robin had this this little yellow bear with a red T-shirt, and that was his toy. He had a, a tiger named Peter, all this, right? And that's how they formulated the story of, you know, Winnie the Pooh. Therefore, this movie, Farewell, Christopher Robin, I know that it's actually a darker story than I made it out to be, meaning a real-life story. The dad, he, like I said, he had PTSD, but it was so bad to the point where he was suicidal at times. It's a really sad story. So I think the, the title of Farewell, Christopher Robin, I think it might play with that a little bit. Just speculation, though, you know? So, this new movie, this new movie, Christopher Robin, takes place where Ewan McGregor, who played Obi-Wan, movies one through three, he plays older Christopher Robin when Christopher Robin's an adult, uh-huh. and then Winnie the Pooh just shows up in his life. 
Wow. <laughs> so the little theory I'm proposing here is wouldn't it be cool if these two movies were actually connected? We don't know about it. It's the uh, it's the it scenario. You know, Stephen King's it. He wrote two books. Or sorry, he wrote one book, but it was split up into two parts. It, which was the, the scary clown as the kids, and then the second half of the book was how those kids became adults and how they dealt with the fear of that clown. So with the movie, they just made a movie that came out in either September or October, and now next year or the year after, they're creating a second it with the children as adults. So I think it's kind of cool they're doing the same thing with this movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. As we, I think we did a a or an it review. What was it back when it came out? Didn't we? Or I. F- I don't remember, man. Huh. We've done we've done so much. I I think it's really cool how we can go back and just see all the news that that was trending at that time. It's pretty cool, right? As far as this Winnie the Pooh, <laughs> the first thing I I was laugh I laughed <laughs> because have you ever seen the movie Ted? Or yes, I've seen Ted. <laughs> that's what I think of. That <laughs> like just Dude, in, <laughs> you, you know those that that those commercials. For like laundry detergent, there's that little the snuggle bear. Yeah. It's like the snuggle bear. It's the snuggle bear. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> um. Listen, for me personally, Winnie the Pooh was a childhood favorite of me. I think I dressed as Tigger one year for Halloween, or um, uh, Eeyore was another one that I did. I loved Eeyore for some reason. My boy. It was. I don't know. It was it's part of my childhood, and to think that it, it how it originated from, I never really knew the background of that. So that's really cool that you were to share that with me, because I never really knew the background. It, it's crazy, just the background of all the fairy tales that we've kind of grown up to know. Obviously, Winnie the Pooh isn't a fairy tale, but there's there's a lot of darker things behind the fairy tales that we have grown up to to know and to learn. So, like, you know, there's the Cinderella one where they cut off toes, and I don't know, that's that's besides the point, but it, it there is some darker wow. things, and I kind of like that, that a whole, you know, conspiracy, obviously this isn't a conspiracy, but the, the idea of how some of the greatest things come from some darker, where people are, are in some harsh points in their lives, and how they can... Get out of that and create something so beautiful that it impacts countless people. So I know it impacted you as a child, it impacted me as a child. Love, you know, Winnie the Pooh is such a, such a nice little guy. Okay, okay, okay. Have you ever seen the B movie? I have. Okay, yep. okay. The meme, the meme central. I love, I love the B movie. I don't know why I asked you that. More, I mean, I like the video game on PlayStation Two. Is there really? The B movie video game, PlayStation Two. Wow. I childhood I lived. That's one of those movies that you just like especially when I was younger, you got nothing else to do, just pop it in and, and watch it. I've watched that thing so many times. Yeah. But the reason that's why I bring it up is because in one of the scenes where what's his name? what's the B bar, bar, Barry? Uh, Barry. Barry. Yeah. How, he's able to crack down on you know the honey and all of those things. And so there's a scene where they're cracking down on all the honey, you know, they're taking honey from these people, these people, and then there's a scene where Winnie the Pooh is like, you know, eating this honey, and they come up with a tranquilizer gun and <laughs> and shoot him. I I thought that was. I forgot all about that. Do you I re- forgot all about that. It's hilarious. Do you remember that scene? I don't know how I remembered that. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna look that up after this. Yeah, look it up. It's it's yeah. it's hilarious. I think he was with uh, what's is it is it Piggy? Is that his name or what's the pink little pig thing? You know what I'm talking about, right? The little pink thing. The little pink pig. Oh, piglet! 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 Yeah. Dude, I thought you were talking about the B movie. And oh I'm like, no 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 no. The B movie not too much for me. I don't, I don't remember no pink thing. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I don't. <laughs> uh, bees, pink thing. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. You should have your own Saturday show called like the B movie Saturday show. Just saying. <laughs> Every Saturday dedicated to the B movie. Uh, oh yeah, times. yeah. It, I'm I'm excited to watch it. It's I don't 
I don't like that it's made by Disney, and here's why. Disney's a monopoly, and Disney's pretty... They're pretty selfish with their money. So I really don't have many great things about Disney to say, even though, you know, I've gone to Disney World, and all, there's so many great Disney things, but obviously it's only fitting it's produced by, by Disney. And then the Goodbye Christopher Robin. That, those are two movies I want to watch. I'm, I'm excited. By the way, this entire time I keep saying farewell, Christopher Robin. You're right, it's goodbye, Christopher Robin. Is it really goodbye? Man. Yeah, yeah, you were right. You pulled a clutch out of it. I keep saying farewell, but it's it's goodbye, yeah. Really? So you were right, again. I yeah. was? What? Oh, okay. I'll, Man, take, I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> the title's here. What's, up? What's going on there? Uh, I'll take that. <laughs> Bro, I'm asleep. Wow, okay. Hey, it was... Doing good. Hey, guys, Vince and I have been challenging ourselves. We're really, really thinking about what we're saying because we've gone back and we've listened to countless, not just here in season three, but so many shows. And at one time was actually pointed out to us. We say, um, a lot. And that is something that, you know, when you're talking, you don't think about that. And there's times where you know, every once in a while you're going to say, um, and it slips and you just go with it. But sometimes you're talking, you just don't realize it, and then you go back and you listen, and you're like, whoa, I'm saying um a lot. Because, I don't know, it's kind of a transition kind of thing. It's just like using like, although I, that that's a little too far for me. I, <laughs> I'm cool with keeping out um, like is, I'll keep like. So Vince and I have been kind of working on in this episode, and so our brains are <laughs> firing. It's, it, it's hard, you... I challenge you guys, try it. it try thinking about what you're actually saying and try to limit the amount of times you say um or or like, all those other things. It's it's a challenge. No, it's really tough. I mean, you look at our past episodes of season three, mostly, and it's a lot of ums, probably because we're not used to recording like we used to be. Yeah. But at around, like, episode five... Or beyond that, it got to a point in meeting in past seasons where we realized how much we were saying it. And we were like, that has to stop, you know? Yeah. And I almost said it right there, but I stopped myself. And you'll notice it, too. So hopefully you notice the, the change. So Hopefully. Hopefully. If you've made it this far, let us know. We're not going to say, if you made it this far, subscribe or like it. Just just let us know. Just, just comment down below. Because obviously our goal is the one day to have... People watch our entire show, and Vince, it does feel very natural being able to talk to you and see your face. It's, I don't know, it's, it's cool. I can't I can't ever think about doing a podcast again, or this isn't a podcast, a show over the phone, so exciting times. It's awesome. So, it really is. Ready to transition? I'm ready to transition. How can we transition Winnie the Pooh to drugs? <laughs> Um, yeah, that's right, folks. Good old snuggly bear transitioning to shooting something up your into your veins. Whoa. <laughs> Think about it. So, you know, Vince and I typically like to have something that's, that's really trending. Something that, because typically when something's trending, we're passionate about it. A lot of other people are passionate so they can relate with us. But this is something that's affected our country, our nation for, for a long time, and I, the reason why we're talking about it now is because I'm doing a project currently, and I've done, I'm, do, I'm doing some research, and it's cool to, to formulate your own opinion, so I kind of want to share my opinion with you guys, and I want to share it with Vince, and hear what he has to say, I, I've said this so many other times, but I love looking at both sides, I know I'm typically, you know, conservative or right, right wing, and, and you know so is Vince, but it's it's about looking at both sides and formulating your own opinion because sometimes you won't agree with whatever side you you typically agree with. And you'll find yourself agreeing with the other. In this instance, I kind of find myself more on the left side. So what I what I mean by that is since basically Nixon, Richard Nixon, and for a long time our country has been waging a war on drugs. I'm sure you guys are very familiar with that term. You know, it, it took it picked up even more steam with Ronald Reagan, 
where he had his own his whole slogan with his wife Nancy, I believe, saying no, just say no to drugs. The ideology behind that is is amazing. You know, drug. <laughs> listen, for me, I still believe. You know, if you're taking drugs and you're addicted and you're getting trouble, it's your fault. I understand there's people who are in some dark times, but I feel like if I was in a dark time, I wouldn't resort to drugs. I would find other. I I just wouldn't resort to drugs. You know. I understand that other people don't have that that ability to resort to other things and they find themselves with drugs and so I still believe it's like other people's fault you know if you're overdosing on drugs it's your fault that's the conservative part but then comes the compassion part I feel like where you never know what these people are dealing with you never know what took them to start with these drugs and some people aren't you know the are depression or in depression and start using drugs because of that other people are just like oh i think it's cool you know so that's another part of me that, that i'm mad about but what, what i'm trying to say is for a very long time we've criminalized drug use and i understand i personally have not used drugs i don't ever see myself using drugs i don't see the benefit to it for me personally but I think it's it's time to decriminalize drugs. And Vince, I'll let you talk. But I'm gonna I'm gonna share with you why. We we pour a, a lot of money into our war on drugs. That's that's the first thing. That's something maybe we could save on. Uh, there's always that always that argument between government spending and if we reduce government spending, we could reduce our debt, which is something I also agree on. And that's something we limit that war and wage wage on drugs from the DEA and all all those other things. That's I don't know. I, we can save money. That's that's basically what I'm trying to say. But that's not my main point. A lot of a lot of crime is caused by by drugs. You know, I my my dad's from Colombia and a, a huge huge battle and a lot of deaths have been, a lot of people have lost their lives due to the fact that cocaine production, there's money. I think drugs correlate with, with crime, with, you know, with death and, and, and pain and all of those kind of things. So, and a lot of people are dying because it's not, it's not heroin that's the killing the people. It's what people are putting into heroin to make them more addicted that is what's killing them. So what if we created a, a federal system where we make it legal, but it's federally controlled, right? So it kind of eliminates a majority of deaths. It declutters our court system, which is crazy right now. It declutters our... or something outside. <laughs> it declutters our, our jails. It, it reduces organized crime. Because now drugs are legal, so what's you know what's there to fight about? Lives could be saved. So that's that's for me actually doing research. That's what I've come to opinion on. So that's why I feel like we should decriminalize drugs. It's not the hottest topic, and I understand that, but that's kind of my standpoint. What do you have to say, Vince? So my left side take on this is that drugs are already in the country, whether you're 10 or whether you're you know 20 and beyond you can still figure out a way to get your drugs i mean al you recently moved so you don't know everybody in your school you probably at least know one guy that is a dealer under the table or you have suspicions you can get drugs from that person and they're illegal you know what i mean so that being said like i know bunches of People, I don't go through those people. I don't go through anybody. So it's like that clear. Um, but everybody also has that one cousin or a family member, something like that. It's so prevalent and it's illegal. So if it was legal, I think it would be a little bit more prevalent. But just because it's illegal, not like it's it's not happening at all. So my left take on it is that if you legalize it. I bet you there's maybe a 10% increase of usage. Other than that, though, if somebody wants to take drugs, they'll take drugs. Not like, 
oh, shoot, that's illegal. I better not. Sure, you don't want to do drugs in public because it's illegal, but you but people will do whatever they want in their house. You know what I mean? If they want it, they want it. So that's my left take on it. My right take on it is it's simply this. You look at the 70s, and I don't know if you've studied that era. I know I have in history, and it's plain and simple. It's like, you know, peace, love, sex, drugs, um, all of that. You know, when, when you were talking, I was listening to you thoroughly, but I also looked up just slogans of the 70s. And if you look at all the t-shirts, and I would incline you to do so, it, it's all drug-related or, or sexually related. The sexual stuff, that's, you know, they're making a push for that. So that's kind of under the table. Let's just talk about the drug stuff for a second. Sure, it, it wasn't always, a lot of it was LSD and other um, opiates and things like that. So it wasn't just, you know, a lot of it was still like the pot and, you know, smoking tobacco and all that. But the bottom line here is that it was so prevalent back then, and lately I don't feel like our, our era of the 2000s, I don't feel like it's been known for that, like the 70s was known for that. Yeah. So I, and I think that's a negative dig towards the 70s. I don't think, I personally don't think positively of that. So from my right side view of things, if we were to legalize um, a multiple amount of drugs, I, I think that that's something people will remember from this era and I don't know if that's such a positive thing. Yeah. What, what do you think, man? No, I, I love your, your viewpoint and your input. I, I get it, yeah. I don't, I don't kind of want to be referred to as the generation that is high on drugs, <laughs> per se. But, Fun choice of words there. So, let me just recap, essentially. Left side is, I don't see why not if we already have them anyways, right side is we're just going to be labeled negatively. You know, people already think millennials are bad as it is. Al, I don't know if we fall as millennials. I don't know what that is, but there's a clear stereotype there. And that's probably going to make things worse. So I'll, I'll let you resume, though. I just kind of wanted to, I know I like to ramble. That's kind of wanted to recap that so you kind of know my points. No, oh, yeah. I have both sides too. I, I see both sides. You know, part of me, like like I said before, to kind of take out the compassion part, you know, I'm I'm here in high school, both Vince and I, and we're both working very hard. We, we, what, we, okay, yes, we're working very hard. We, we have a future. We, we want to do things. You know, we're, we're here we are. Um, we find ourselves on Friday nights calling each other and, and talking about our, our podcast, which is, or we're talking about school or what we, where we want to go to college and all of those things where, you know, we see a lot of kids our age on a Friday and any other given or any given night, but, you know, preferably on a Friday night out there, you know, drinking, drugs, other stuff. And part of me is like, these guys are eventually going to get to the workforce and they, uh, I've seen it, I see it at my school, I, I saw it where Vince and I were both at the same school, and I know it's basically every other high school, and people are like, eh, whatever, I just want to do everything I want. So that's kind of what I associate with, with drugs, it's kind of a negative connotation with the people who use drugs. And, you know, the, the, the angry thing is also about how maybe these people, <laughs> let's say they continue their drug use, and it, and it gets heavier, and have your drug use and drugs become more prevalent in their lives. Now these people are are almost in a way detrimental to our society. You know, they're not giving us anything. They're 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 uh, supplying people or you know supplying drug dealers that are getting their their drugs from people who had to kill someone. You know what I'm saying? So. And then, and then, you know, we're, you know, I'm working hard, we're getting a good job, but then we're paying a ton of money to, you know, to welfare to take care of the people who, who are, dr who can't do anything, or are disabled due to heavy drug use, you know, or some people who are like, well, who cares? I, I, I have no future. Um, so I, I don't, I don't have to work because I'm receiving welfare because I'm making more money from welfare than from working. 
So then part of me is like, what? Are, are you kidding me? So <laughs> I really don't have a great connotation with drugs. So it was hard to me. It was hard for me to get over that bias per se, a, a bias that, you know, or even the stereotype that all people who use drugs are, are bad people and all of those things. I just feel like if, if we were to decriminalize it, it would, first of all, a lot of kids are doing drugs because it, it makes them cool. It's illegal. So it makes them, you know, bad, you know, like bad, like, uh, like bad boy, you know, you know, stuff like that. Make it legal. What's the point? You know what I'm saying? Like, so I feel like it would reduce that in a sense. But people who, who want to use it, it's now safer because I feel like it would be federally supervised. They would limit the amount of things that are, you know, the additives that are the actual you know, killing. killing. Yeah, exactly. So that That's my standpoint. I it, it's, it's a tricky issue. I, I've seen countless issues with our, with our, you know, jail system, with our court system, and it's heavy traffic, and the predominant reason as to why it's heavy traffic is because of drug users, and then you also have to go into account, doing my research, you have amendment, or the fourth amendment, where, you know, it limits the amount of searches and seizures, where people were People are doing illegal searches and seizures, random urinary test samples. You know, if, if a police officer smells weed in your car, even though maybe there isn't weed or there is, you know, they feel like it's their obligation to go into your car and, and to search it, which, you know, it's illegal. So that there's also a limit on that as well. That That's regarding to the war on drugs. So that that's kind of my standpoint. It's a tricky issue. I loved hearing your your input. I think we're both kind of on the same page, essentially. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, they're really. I'm not sure if there's a correct answer with this, um, but you do understand what I'm saying with you know the kids our age and the frustration with all of that. Oh yeah. Just some, just some final thoughts because you did bring up your big stance that I personally have not addressed yet. Or mostly because I was trying to figure out an answer that I actually had that I believed in. So I'm going to tell you this. Your whole idea of kind of letting, taking out the additives that kill people and the drugs and having this be be run by, you know, federal and thing like, things like that. Is it smart? I, I personally think so. However, I think it's a it's a stretch because it would be it would be so new and, and so freshly legalized. You'd have to you'd have to build up uh, factories in which can produce. It would be um, hiring new jobs as well. There's a lot of other stuff that goes into it. And bottom line is, you would also be taking away business from the people that have been dealing, which is a good thing. However, people are still going to be able to add them anyways. What I think is that if it does become legalized, I think that the dealers, they should somehow get a permit or something like that required by the state that from there they sign saying that these additives that, that would kill people, those would be illegal. And then if they're ever caught using those substances, then although the drug itself is legal, they could still go to jail for possessive of those additives that are extra addictive that could end up killing you. So just thought, I, I love how, you know, I might not be right, you might not be right, but I saw something in your idea, and that kind of built off of it, and I know you do the same with me. So, I don't know how you feel about that, but that's, that's kind of my final thoughts on this. Here we are, two high schoolers, and thank you, Vince, for, for sharing that with me. I was pretty excited about that. I didn't get, I don't know, I kind of freaked out. I had it all planned out in my head. I couldn't really get the most of my message out, but I got... The big, the big points, you know, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Um, just said, um, I lost my train of thought. I'm really sorry. Really, really sorry. I lost my train, but thank you, Vince, for participating in that. I found it. Look at us, two high schoolers talking about this kind of stuff, political stuff. And hey, we got, we got our heads on our shoulders. We should feel, we should feel good about ourselves.
I really should though. Should. It's pro it's proactive thinking. We're not we're not joining we're not joining the uh the cause of the drugs. We're fighting against it, but we're also finding solutions for it. So it's it's a different way of thinking, especially for kids our age, but uh yeah. good way of thinking. Yeah. Hey Vince, I had a blast this show. this show was, was much better. We were more fluid. <laughs> it's only gonna get better. Else? Uh, our audience guys thank you so much i think that's about it vince i have a a quote pulled up here if you have another one please please share it with me i well actually kind of two but they kind of correlate with one another it says if you don't challenge yourself you will never realize what you can become and then it's the cliche quote saying a smooth sea never made a skillful sailor so Gotta embrace those challenges. Always. Always. But that, Always. guys, that's for me. Episode four already. Wow. We're we're cruising along. Hopefully a part of a long season three. Very excited to get things going. But with that, guys, have a great weekend. Make your weekend even greater. Go tune into Vince's second show. Really excited. Go go give that a listen. Go give it a big thumbs up. Uh, but with that, guys, have a great rest of your day or have a Hope you had a great day. That owl's out. See you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. That kind of wraps it all up. As Al says, and I always want to spread good positivity myself. We're always thinking of you guys. We're always hoping you guys had a great day. You you made us big. So you're always on our minds. And it means a lot when somebody compliments you throughout your day or if they tell you, Hey man or, or girl, whatever it's up, whatever you are, you know, uh, have a great day. And, and it means a lot to you. So from the bottom of our hearts, the Leo bros, have a great day. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks for being a part of this video. We'll see you guys. Peace. Peace.